Hello, my name is Jaleez. Welcome out everyone to my top 10 Marvel Netflix villains. This is from the Marvel TV show from I Daredevil to Iron Fist to Luke Cage. We're ranking all the, we're not ranking all the villains. We're ranking my personal top 10. But let me get some honorable mentions. My first honorable mention is Harold Meacham. Harold's a slimeball. He's a, he's an unstable guy. That to, to kill Danny Rand's parents who's trying to take over the corporation and he's been working for the hand all this time. He's a greedy motherfucker. But he's entertaining to watch. I love Harold. 14, uh, or like honorable mention Harold. Another uh, uh, honorable mention I want to give is to Krista Dumont. Krista Dumont from The Punisher Season 2 was the therapist for Billy Russo. Yes, he had a therapist. And she is just as deadly. She knows how to break Castle. She knew how to get Castle to nearly want to give up in life and all that stuff. And she's a great villain. I enjoy her. I feel pity for her. But she is a psycho. Krista Dumont, number 13. Uh, another honorable mention is Wesley. My god, I enjoyed Wesley as a character. I was so pissed we only got one season of him in Daredevil. Wish he could return. I wish he came back in a flashback scene or something. Did not like the way he ended. Uh, went out, but he was a loyal soldier to Kingpin. He was a good friend to Kingpin. And just the way he smiled at you, you're like, oh, this is not what the fuck you want to mess with. You think he's bad. He's like, he's the one who's trying to save you from the ultimate evil. Which is Kingpin, but Wesley, I love. And the last honorable mention I want to give to is Shades. Shades is a stone cold motherfucker. I mean, this guy, he loves Mariah. He he was looking out for number one himself and for Mariah himself. And this guy, he knows the game. He knows how to deal with the courts. He knows how to deal with the streets. This guy is a cool cat. But the problem is, though, he is not the best villain. He's a cool character. I enjoy him. He's an, a nice character, but he's not my favorite. So let's start off with number 10. And number 10 is learning Cottonmouth. I love Cottonmouth. This character should never have been killed off the way he was in Season 1. If you're going to kill him off, kill him off in the finale. But, oh my god. It's such wasted potential. The fact that Cottonmouth was a young man. He was a talented young man who knew how to play music and all this stuff. And how he's brought into a life of crime. By Mother Mabel and all that stuff was just heartbreaking. And he's just a cool character. He's an original gangster. He believes in old, the old rules, old systems, and all this stuff. I love Cottonmouth as a character. An actor that portrayed him, fantastic. But the reason why he ain't higher is because, eh, because he's, you know, they, he's they, because how he went off, and then how many other villains got a better story. So to me, Cottonmouth is just number 10. Number nine, I'm gonna get to John P uh, John Pilgrim Pilgrim. I love Pilgrim. He is just like Frank Castle. He's a religious uh, Punisher. This guy will kill you in any second of the world for his God, for his family to protect what's his own. He's a cool character. He is an evil character. He's willing to kill women, children. He doesn't uh, matter. And the fact is that he fully believes what he says. And the fact is that. There's nothing more sinister than a villain that fully believes that what he's doing is the right thing. And John Pilgrim is that. He's a great character. He's one of my favorite characters of Marvel Netflix TV shows, but he's one of my favorite villains. John Pilgrim, number nine, from Punisher Season 2. Number eight is Salinger. This guy is a psychopath. This guy wants to, it doesn't like cheaters. He wants to know your truth. He wants to. He doesn't like an unjust world. He's like, hey, you have your powers. That's cheating. You have, your, you have to rely on technique. You have to rely on uh, training and all that stuff. He does not give a shit. Salinger is... The people that he kills are people he, in some cases, jealous of. As some people could say. Or the fact that he finds them cheating in some sense. But to me, Salinger, as a character, is phenomenal. I think he was a great uh, villain to Jessica Jones. And he breaks down Jessica Jones' interest relationship like, like crazy. I mean, I love... Uh, I love Salinger, but what he did to Jessica Jones and uh, Trish, my god. Worthy of being a villain. So, Salinger number eight. Number seven, I'm going to give to Madame Gao. Madame Gao, at first appeared in Daredevil Season 1, she was that old Asian lady that uh, walked to Fakana and all stuff, and you knew she meant business. You didn't want to fuck with her. She may, she may not be, like, as young, or she may not be as quick as other people, but she is just as deadly. You do not want to mess with her. When you get that, like, she's a sign of power, of respect, and she was like that since the uh, first two Daredevil seasons, the Iron Fist season one, and the Defenders. She, she was a member of the Hand, one of the five of the Hand that I actually do and enjoy, 
and she was a great character. I we don't know what her fate is. I suppose that she's dead, but I wouldn't be surprised if she's alive. So Madame Gao, great character. I liked her. Always intimidating. Always creeped the shit out of me. Madame Gao, number seven. Number six, I'm gonna give to Bullseye. Bullseye is a psychopath. Bullseye is the type of it doesn't want people to leave him. Uh, he doesn't want people to uh, to be better than him. He wants people to acknowledge him and to love him. He wants to be loved. He wants people to never abandon him. And if he doesn't get his way, he's gonna throw a fucking baseball and uh, split your head open. He's a psychopath. He doesn't feel much empathy for a lot of people and all that stuff. He tries to be better. He tries to be different. He tries to. He does try. To at least be empathetic to, or like, hey, he tries to see from other people's viewpoints, but in reality, he just wants everybody to burn. He, in his true nature, he just wants everybody to die. And only the few that he, anybody else that's, he doesn't want to die, it's just like, you're, I'm above you and all that stuff, and you're my property and all that stuff. It's like he's very territorial. I love that about Bullseye. And Bullseye is a fantastic character. He's a deadly character, and don't mess with him. You screw with him, he's gonna kill you. It's that simple. Bullseye, interesting character. Like him, um, he's all he tried to be better than what he was, but reality, his nature prevailed over him. So yeah, number uh, five is Bullseye. I mean six. Number five, I'm gonna give to Davos. Davos was a beast. He is a beast. He's a great villain. He's a man again, like I said about John Perlman, a villain that totally believes in what he believes is the true path. Davos truly believes he was doing the right thing in season two of Iron Fist. He, we understand the reason why he hates Danny, why he believes Iron Fist was taken from him, why he believes that all crime and that every that he has a certain morals and he doesn't break that code. His line in the sand is drawn. You do, uh, do drugs and all that stuff and all that stuff. He's gonna kill you to, so he can speed up the process. Uh, process. You get in his way. You insult him in some sense. He's gonna go ballistic on you. You honor and respect him. He'll honor and respect you. But if you insult him in the slightest, he has a loose temper. He's not dealing with anybody else's shit. He's straight eh, forward at eh, what his past is. Like if you're defending some, eh, like if you're defending a criminal and all this stuff, you're like a. Let's say if you're like a prosecutor eh, and you're a lawyer and all this stuff, defending a criminal. If you stop them from getting justice, he's gonna do it. He's gonna kill you and the guy that you're defending. So that's how eh, Davos is. Davos is a true martial artist. He's a great warrior, but he doesn't give a shit. Davos. Great character, number five. Number four, I'm going to give to Billy Russo. You got to be a pretty special fucking asshole to kill your best friend's family. You got to be a, pretty much of an asshole to kill your uh, lover's partner and all that stuff and then wash her body afterwards. You're pretty much of an asshole. You have no sympathy for other people. You will kill as many people as you can. You don't give a, He doesn't give a shit about anybody or anything. He only cares about himself and maybe now his new therapist. But Billy Russo was a conniving cunt. He was an asshole. He was all the bad words I could ever think of. This guy was a beast as a fighter. He was a very pretty man when he was pretty, but then he became Jigsaw, then he became unstable. Crazy dude, but yeah. Billy Russo, interesting character, great character, great villain. Number five, I mean number four, Billy Russo. Number three, I'm going to give to Kingpin. Kingpin was the first Daredevil, the first Marvel Netflix villain that we ever truly got, super villain. Kingpin doesn't give a shit. He truly believes that he could save the city and all this stuff, but you get in his way, he's going to kill you. He does not give a shit about other people, and the only few people that he do, he will do anything to protect. You mess with way you screw with Wesley, you're going to get the Kingpin. You screw with his wife, he, you're going to get the Kingpin. You screw with anybody that Kingpin cares about, he will massacre you. We get his backstory why he became the Kingpin, why he became a, a murderer and all that stuff, which is understandable. And for Kingpin himself, he's an unstable lunatic, but he does want to do better for people. He wants people to actually do better. But if, uh, like if uh, egg and omelets and all that stuff, if a couple people have to die in order to achieve the ultimate end goal, he will do it. Kingpin is a villain. He will burn you. He will, he's like he will regret burning your house down, but. If you leave no option, he's like, well, I gotta do what I gotta do. I, I don't I don't know, take pleasure in doing this, but he always tries to appeal to his better nature. In other words, came and he always tries to be better than what he wish. Then he always tries to be better to what society wants and all that stuff. But the reality, he's a beast. He's a vicious monster. He what well, he does not give a shit. 
Kingpin is a brutal guy. The actor that portrays him is a wonderful. And there's nothing more I can say. Kingpin is a great villain. The ultimate mastermind, the ultimate criminal mastermind, Kingpin number freaking three. Number two, and I'm going to give this to Mariah Stokes. My God. She, uh, she leaves, uh, a woman who could call her own daughter a mistake and like uh, she got rid of you and all that stuff and basically it, it treats her like a piece of shit, you're a piece of shit. The fact that she was raped by her uncle caused some mental instability and all that stuff, she, how she killed her cousin Cottonmouth, how she, how she just burned a man alive after killing his family and all that stuff. She's a whole new level of I'm going to take pleasure in every single thing I do. If I have to burn a couple of people, go ahead. If I have to behead a couple of people, go right ahead. She does not give a shit. I know a lot of these villains don't give a shit, but Mariah Soaks really doesn't give a shit. I loved her as a villain. I think she's a great villain. I think she was fantastic in Luke Cage Season 2 when she fully transformed into Mariah Stokes, not Dillard. She's a funny character. She's a savvy character. And she is charming as fuck. Mariah Stokes, Mariah, not Mariah Dillon, Mariah Stokes is number two. And my number one favorite Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe or Marvel villain from Netflix shows is Kilgrave. This guy, as he says to Jessica Jones, how do I know? Like, he doesn't know what human emotion is. He's a spoiled brat. If he doesn't get his way, he's going to get a tantrum. The entire world's his plaything. He could command anybody with a little bit of a... Anything he speaks, they will do it. If he tells the guy to go fuck himself, the guy's literally going to try to go fuck himself. If he says, stop talking, you're going to stop talking. The world is his playground. And he's a little a grown... He's a grown adult as a little kid. And all these humans are his playdings, his children. The only thing he tried to do uh, different was with Jessica Jones and all that stuff. But in reality, he doesn't care about people. He doesn't care... He finds them all as disposable objects in this world, and the only one thing he wants is Jessica. He is a conniving evil dick, but the thing is, with him, he doesn't really believe he's evil. Because he just thinks, this is how the world is. I'm like a god to these people, and they're going to do what I say. Like, it's not evil. They should be honored that I even chose them. That's like the type of mental stability this guy has. Like, when Jessica says, yeah, I you raped me and all this stuff. When, and then the thing is, oh, Kilgrave is like, how do I know? Like, I tell you to do it, saying, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure you enjoyed it and all that stuff, but he doesn't have empathy for other people's feelings and all that stuff. He doesn't really know how to deal with people. He doesn't know how to be human, because in reality, he's not human. So, Kilgrave as a villain, it's a fantastic villain. He's an unstable masterpiece. I love every single thing about Kilgrave. He's a conniving, evil bastard that doesn't believe he's an evil bastard. He believes he's a hero. He's like Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. He believes he's a hero of the story. And that Belle will go back to him and all this stuff. And the Beast must be destroyed. In other words, Kilgrave loves Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones will be with him instead of Luke Cage and all this stuff. Kilgrave is so deliciously evil, so unstable. And I, I don't want to say misunderstood, but he believes he's misunderstood. That's something you gotta clap for. Kilgrave is easily the best Marvel Netflix villain, in my opinion. And that's my top uh, 10 rankings of all the Marvel Netflix villains. And to me, what's your personal opinion, everybody? You think Kilgrave should be number one? You think uh, Ryan Stokes is too high? Do you think Dabble shouldn't be on this list? Are you wondering why uh, Typhoon Moiri ain't on this one? Because I kind of don't think she's a villain. I think she's kind of like an anti hero and all this stuff. She hasn't did an evil thing just yet. She hasn't murdered anybody that we know that was good character. So. Overall, all these characters, what's your personal opinion, everybody? What's your least favorite villain? What do you think is a villain that should be on here? Let me just all think of one. Name's your least favorite, everybody. Uh, bye.